With summer just months away, many people are hoping the heat will help fight off coronavirus. Ian Lee is in London with a look at what scientists are predicting. Locked in quarantine, you may be fantasizing about summer, tanning in the sun or taking a dip in the sea. But a big question remains. As the weather warms up, will the coronavirus pandemic wind down? I hope so, at least, yeah. I think it'll be cause for celebration if it does start to die down. Scientists are divided. Some believe the heat won't matter. These viruses and this one are not so mindful of time of year. They care much more about whether there are susceptible humans close enough together for it to jump from one to the next, to the next, to the next. Others point to a study at University of Hong Kong that found the virus deteriorated over time when stored in a lab at 72 degrees. Evidence from similar viruses also suggests COVID may transmit less efficiently in the spring and summer months. Right now, Australia and Singapore are experiencing high temperatures and low infection rates. But that's not the case everywhere. Look at New Orleans. New Orleans has a terrible explosive outbreak right now. And New Orleans is one of the warmest places in the United States right now as well. Dr. Anthony Fauci, the top infectious disease expert in the U.S., says the coronavirus will continue to do its own thing and that there's no guarantee the weather will come to the rescue. Ian Lee, CBS News, London. A new study is shedding light on the possible effects of the coronavirus on pregnant women. Two New York City hospitals tested more than 200 women admitted for delivery, whether they showed symptoms or not. The results revealed nearly 90 percent of the women who tested positive showed no symptoms. CBS News correspondent Nikki Batiste, who is 37 weeks pregnant, has more on this study. Yanira Soriano met her newborn son for the first time Wednesday after spending nearly two weeks in a medically induced coma. Era fiebre, fiebre muy alta. Yanira's husband, Walter Sanchez, told us she was eight months pregnant when she went to the emergency room with a severe fever, struggling to breathe. After testing positive for COVID-19, she was quickly intubated. Uh, At that point, Walter said the doctors conducted an emergency C-section while Yanira was on a ventilator. Hospitals across New York are preparing for similar situations. We really advocate for um, assessment on a case-by-case -case basis. Dr. Dina Goffman is with the Columbia University Irving Medical Center. She co-authored a new study of more than 200 pregnant women at two New York City hospitals. 33 women tested positive for coronavirus, but 29 of them showed no symptoms. If we're not checking, we really do risk missing people who are carrying the virus. I'm 37 weeks pregnant. If I come in and test positive, would you recommend separating my newborn from me? For a mom who's asymptomatic and feeling well, um, we think there are ways to potentially keep them together to allow for some of the bonding. So far, studies have not shown coronavirus passes to the baby from the womb or through breast milk. But Dr. Goffman says asymptomatic mothers should wear masks while around their newborns. <laughs> And for people with life-threatening symptoms like Yanira Soriano, it's not just childbirth, but leaving the hospital as a healthy mom that is a life-changing miracle. Partners and spouses at New York hospitals who are testing pregnant women for COVID-19 have their temperatures taken. That will be my husband. If he has a fever, he will not be allowed inside. Nikki Batiste, CBS News, New York. A 99-year-old British war veteran has captured the hearts of millions in the UK by raising millions for health care workers during the pandemic. Charlie Daggett has the story from London. A couple of weeks ago, World War II veteran Captain Tom Moore came up with a new way to serve his country. A hundred laps of his garden, ten a day in time for his hundredth birthday. A way of saying thank you to Britain's National Health Service for his new hip, hoping to raise maybe a thousand pounds, roughly twelve hundred dollars, a little morale boost in a country hurting for inspiration. Remember, tomorrow is a good day. And, uh, you can tomorrow you'll maybe find everything but much better than today, even if today was all right. 
Captain Tom had no idea how good his tomorrow was about to become. The donations began pouring in, so he upped the ante. Why not half a million pounds? Soon, he sprinted past that too. Within days, Captain Tom became a household name with people getting daily updates on his progress. Because here's what Captain Tom tapped into, a national outpouring of support for Britain's straining health workers. Understaffed and under-equipped in dealing with a death toll that has now surged past 13,000, including doctors and nurses. Thank you so much for all of your efforts and how much money you've raised for the NHS. So with each step, Captain Tom was carrying the country along with him, and not just Britain. Soon, people from more than 50 nations, including the United States, pitched in. One million became two million, four million, eight million. At that point, he even got a shout out from Health Secretary Matt Hancock. Captain Tom, you're an inspiration to us all, and we thank you. Ten million, thousands of dollars by the minute. By the morning of his last day, Captain Tom had raised more than $16 million. And along the way, he raised hope. The sun will shine on you again and the clouds will go away. Captain Tom is fond of the saying, fortune favors the brave. He could not have been more right. Inches to go and there he is. Charlie Daggett, CBS News, well London. Go Captain Tom. All right, we are going to take a quick break. When we come back, the latest from the White House, where President Trump's plan to reopen the U.S. stands now. Plus, experts warn prison populations are especially vulnerable during the outbreak. We'll take a look at what's being done to stop the spread behind bars. You're streaming CBSN, CBS News, always on.